Hi folks, in this video, I'm going to build a NAS to replace my existing NAS, which is about 5 years old. The primary reason I would like to replace my old NAS is because it's a 2-bay NAS and with two 1.5 terabyte hard drives, I get about one in RAID 0, in, sorry, in RAID 1 configuration, I get about 1.2 terabytes of usable space which by today's standards is slightly less and since it's just a two-bay NAS, I can't expand it any further. The other problem that I have with that unit is its throughput is absolutely horrible and by horrible, I mean I get these speeds. You can't live with that. And with the decent hardware, you can expect throughput like these which are pretty decent and good for what I need. The other intention of this build is to just see if you go the route of building your own NAS and you can stick to a price below the existing NAS units that you have out there. Mind you, we won't be able to match the existing NAS units for size but we can definitely beat them for speed and price. So let's look at the components that I have got and get into the build. The CPU that I've chosen for this build is AMD Athlon 5350. The AMD Athlon 5350 is an AM1 socket processor with quad cores and a 2.05 gigahertz clock speed. And having said that, it does have a 2MB L2 cache with slightly on the lower side and the key reason that I've chosen this CPU is due to its low TDP and that basically means less power consumption especially in the NAS where it's going to be running for 24 hours. The other advantage of a lower TDP is that it will generate less heat that means I don't have to worry about cooling in this in the case much. For the motherboard I've chosen the MSI AM1M it is a socket AM1 motherboard. It supports DDR3 memory up to 1600 MHz. It has two DDR3 memory slots with support up to 32 GB. It just has a single channel memory architecture and it supports non-ECC, unbuffered memory only. For expansion, this has one PCIe 16X slot and two PCIe 1X slots. The major limitation of this board is it only has two SATA ports on board. For now, it can be only used as a two-bay NAS. Later, I'll be putting in an add-on card and expand this into a six-bay NAS. The other good thing about this board is supports one GBPS LAN, and that is something that you would definitely need for a NAS. For the power supply, I have chosen a lesser known brand, the Lepa N350SB, which is a 350 watt power supply. With our processor just being a 25 watt, a 350 watt power supply is more than enough for this NAS. While looking at the data sheets for this power supply, I did not come across any efficiency ratings on this power supply. It provide you about 120 watts on the 5 volt rail and about 240 watts on the 12 volt rails. The case I've chosen for this build is an NRMAX Fullmo Q. It's an all black case. It supports up to six three and a half hard drives with one movable cage that can move between two and a half and three and a half hard drives. The good thing about this case is that it has direct access base to the drives. It has a bottom mounting power supply. This case has four fan mounts, one at the back, one on the top and two in the front, right in front of the hard drive cages. Drive cages. In the future, if we want more hard drives to be put into the cage, we can put in a 5.5 to 3.5 adapter in the two 5.25 slots that this case has. The whole interior is powder coated in black and there are no exposed metal surfaces, which is really nice and it has a very nice feeling to it. All the sharp edges are rolled. That means it won't catch onto any cables or cut any cables. The hard drives that I'm using for this build are the ones that I already had. And these are one terabyte Western Digital Blue hard drives. They have 64 megabytes of cache and they are 7 to 200 RPM drives. And mind you, these are not green drives. These are intended for desktop units, using this in the NAS unit just because I had them lying around. Now you might ask as to why I'm stepping back from a 1.2 terabyte NAS to a 1 terabyte NAS. The only reason I'm putting these two drives in this system for now 
is that once I transfer all the data from my existing NAS into this NAS, I'll be repurposing those 1.5 terabyte hard drives into this NAS as well. And in the later series, I will be adding an add-on card to add on four more drives into this NAS, uh, making it a six bay NAS instead of just the two bay that I'm building right now. I'm using two sticks of 4 GB DDR3 1600 RAM in this build as well. So the total cost is $159. And on top of that, I got about $25 worth of mail-in rebate. So the actual cost of the diskless system is about $134. The $8 flash drive that I have in there is to install free NAS on it. Even though I had it lying around, I just added the cost of it into this build. So to give you folks the exact cost that you might uh, run into. The only other thing that I want to mention is the $44 that you see for the motherboard and the processor combo was a special price in fries if i bought this separately that might cost me about 70 dollars so that would be 30 dollars more than what i paid for this now